Makes him pay full price. Port back to a 36 point advantage. Stewart squeezes for Lobie will kick a goal. He does. Matthew Lobie. Matthew White. <laughs> Anthony Alessiani. And that other prick, Jack Hudson. <laughs> Yay. Hello, yeah. everyone, and welcome to another episode of Pairs in a Pod. This week, we've got a very special guest to join us. It's going to be a massive night. We've got a full four screen going on here, which is exceptional. But firstly, I'm going to introduce my co-host, Matthew Watt. Matty, how are you, mate? Hello, Ant. How are you, mate? I heard you had a very nice weekend over in uh, Melbourne, apart from the casino and the game. But I heard uh, you may have dropped off that other bloke that we had on here the other week. Yeah, we stayed in a B and B so close to the Yarra, and um, I haven't seen him since. So it's been pretty good. Um, speaking of the man that lived in the Yarra, Megahead, Jack Hudson. Hello, hello. Uh, g'day, boys. Uh, Whitey, funny that we booked last week. We're trying to have a sprint, and you went MIA on us because your boys got smoked. <laughs> so- yeah, well, we had the same uh, sort of issue that uh, Port had on Saturday, and. Uh- Collingwood just put us to the sword. So, obviously, representing tonight. But, yep. uh, yeah, no, it was a big 90-odd uh, point loss and a bit of soul-searching and depressive drinking after that one. <laughs> no. Still going. Uh, Sensational. Still going after it. Well, we don't want to talk about you two because you could go on all night about yourselves. I'm going to get to the <laughs> guest. Now, this bloke was one of the... Uh, one of the best ruckmen I reckon we had in 2000s, uh, during the 2010s, he played uh, just over 100 games, I think it was, 92 at Port Adelaide, if I am correct. He also kicked a handful of goals as well. I'm speaking of the very interesting Matthew Lovey. <laughs> Lobes, welcome to the podcast. G'day, guys. Thanks for having me. Lobes, uh, what have you been up to, mate, since, uh, since you pulled up stumps at Carlton? Like you've been doing a bit of coaching, did a bit of playing. What have you been up to? Yeah, I tried to play VFL at Werribee, but not very successfully through the COVID years. I got nine games out. Um, did enjoy it there, uh, but sort of finished up after that. Was working at the Players Association as well in an admin role and enjoyed that, but definitely was keen to get back into a club. And um, luckily, an opportunity landed back at Port Ruck Coaching. And then I'm sort of got my way back into development coaching and now managing the development team. So um, loving being back at Port and being back at a club and um, really enjoying it. Come off a, not a great game for us, but I'm I'm not still having a beer on a Thursday like Whitey, so it wasn't that bad. <laughs> Come on, mate. That's, that's, a, that's actually fair. fair point. <laughs> I want to know, how did you get back in to Port? Like you were living here, moved back to SA, Opportunity at Port, obviously. How did that come about for you? Uh, I definitely tried to get my um, to keep my networks going, so I stayed in contact with Chris Davies, um, amongst another, you know, the other contacts at other clubs that I knew. Um, but I definitely, I remember sitting at home in I was in living in Coburg, um, in Melbourne, and uh, watching the AFL finals, and just it was locked down just going i just i just really need to get back to a club like i just miss it and i love it and i just want to be part of it so i was on the blower a fair bit um and luckily an opportunity came up um so yeah it was pretty glad to get back in when you did come back to port adelaide did it almost feel like that you never left yeah and yeah it was really odd um like i was away for four years and then you step back in and there's a lot of the same faces and a lot of the language that the guys use was the exact same. Like the nicknames they had for each other hadn't changed at all and I'd completely forgotten about some of them. Um, and, you know, some of the game plan was the same. Some was completely different, um, but a lot of similarities. So, yeah, that was good. You even got to pull the boots back on last year, mate. And I remember seeing you after the game and you're walking like a zombie a bit. How did that feel? Yeah, well... I built it up a bit. So Westy and myself were always helping out at Sample and we'd always get to the, the pregame, the last pregame warm up and be like, We're ready to play here, like we're pumped up, we're ready to go. <laughs> Thinking that we were still good enough. And then when I actually did pull on the boots, because we had six people go down with COVID, I was so far off it it wasn't funny. Um, so that was a big reality check. I think it helped my coaching though, because it made me realise that it's just actually pretty hard to play. Um so no, nah, that was fun, but I'd like to still play at some level locally, but I'm not this year. 
Yeah, and that's that's where you kick in, mate. There you go. Get your recruiting boots on. Uh, Saint <laughs> Paul's said that, looking for a key ruckman. Globes off air, mate. We'll discuss a few things. If you're wanting to help out here and there, absolutely fine, mate. Two p.m. every Saturday. <laughs> Man, I'll do that get, time get slot. Get you over to Coburg if you want. Get you back in the VFL system. <laughs> you no, know, I can pay you fifty bucks a game and beers on a Thursday night. So sounds pretty good. I can't offer that. <laughs> at least he's not offering. At least why he's not offering you to what rut coach? He offered me that last week. It was no pay. You just get a knee to the head every day. So <laughs> <laughs> no, well, a shit deal. After you knocked me back, I actually found a ruck bag. So I found something <laughs> to fill in, which is nice. But yeah, that's you probably meant- an important start that you have a ruck bag, Whitey. <laughs> it's, it's taken me two years, but I finally got one. Oh, oh yeah, that's pretty good. good. Kicking that goal in that game, Lobes. Alberton was bloody loud. How'd you feel snapping it around? That one game last year. Uh, yeah. That was a real sense of relief because it was the third quarter and I hadn't had a touch. Uh, that's <laughs> that's <stage> true. <laughs> I clearly remember the, the goal umpire. So I took a mark and it, I think it was over the line, um, over the behind line and then the guy umpire looked at me and let it go and then I <laughs> wheeled around and snapped it and everyone got around me and I finished with four touches so pretty influential <laughs> <laughs> big hit on the game love that Sounds oh, like I, did, I did to back myself up they didn't give me a rock contest I was playing deep forward and we weren't winning so <laughs> well, was going against me would have been pretty good to see you wheel into the middle we <laughs> just gone shit As- what are you doing to me Lokes? <laughs> Midfield coach and rap coach, you just at some point you're losing. You go, do you know what, boys? Let me have my moment. <laughs> no, I, I did try. I did try to make that happen, but it didn't work. Oh, bloody hell! Mm. Oh, that's good. Uh, we'll take it back all the way. I'll go back even before the draft. We're speaking of rucking. As a junior, was it always going to be the big tack ruckman, or does it did it come late? How did it come um, out for you? I was always one of the tallest in my team. Um, so I was always rocking, you know, some stages through the game. But definitely, I remember in juniors, you played the, there was a rotation, like Ruck and then um, Rover. So I was in that rotation. So just midfield the whole game. Um, but definitely love the fact that as a Ruckman, you're just in the action the whole time. So um, I think my, when I did get drafted as a forward, though, my final year, I wasn't quite tall enough. And then, Played forward and then shot up just before the draft. So could have been a forward or a ruck in the end. There you go. Big towering ruck forward combo. Love those. They're always good. <laughs> but run us through your draft draft year lobes. Um yeah, what was it like? And then going first round. How exciting was that? Well, that was back in the days where it wasn't on the internet, so we were still on the radio. <laughs> so we were sitting around <laughs> In mum and dad's lounge room, listening to the radio, and I, I think I was just just wanted to get drafted, so I still was um, not sure if I was going to or not. So definitely wasn't expecting first round. I remember the only numbers that he got floated with in the fifties um, was Richmond and Melbourne. So when when I got caught out sixteen, I remember mum squealed, and then um, <laughs> I didn't even hear my name. She she'd memorized the number, um, and then. <laughs> And then everyone just lost it. And then I remember just going into, into shock, to be honest. Um, a bit of shock, didn't really know what to do. And then it took me about six months to process it, I think. Um, but that nah, was pretty pretty exciting. Um, that was on a Saturday. And then by the Monday, I was in Adelaide and everything happened pretty quickly. Um, so now I'm, I still now, every single time a new draftee walks in, I still remember the feeling. So... <laughs> Try and get around them and um, help them as much as they can. Does your mum still know the number? Oh, <laughs> probably. She's an accountant. So she's got numbers imprinted into her brain. Oh, that's <laughs> great. Uh, was it always Port Adelaide or was there hints of somewhere else um, leading up to the draft? Uh, afterwards, mum and dad said they thought it was Port because Port had met with me three times, which was the most of any team at that stage. But at, like honestly, I'd met with seven clubs and I was just happy to go anywhere at that stage. Definitely, um, it didn't matter where. Um, so I think, no, nah, I mean obviously it worked out well. But I think Choco probably at that point, Choco um, liked me, and that's probably why I got over the line. <laughs> I think that tends to happen with Choco's players as well. <laughs> it's just yeah. he likes it. Um, obviously. A lot of development in the early years, like trying to build up size, confidence, all that sort of stuff. What was it like sort of biding your time? 
Uh, I was pretty frustrating. Um, I, rem- I remember just feeling like oh, I should be ready to go straight away and put a bit of pressure on myself. So now I tell all the kids not to when they come in. Um, <laughs> but you just got to grow in your body. Like Everyone said it at the time, but I was like, yeah, 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 that's, that's going to take a fair while. Um, so, and I, I remember the way it was. That I couldn't get into the Port Mayhew side. Um, we had Jimmy Micklejohn, who was a big towering beast of a ruckman. Mm. I couldn't get in there, so then ended up going to West Adelaide, and that was sort of how I broke through. Broke through to play um, first ruck and gave me a chance to prove myself. So that you know that was in my second year. So I spent the whole first year in my in the reserves. So I often tell Jeez. that to the to the young guys now, saying, "Just get in a play league footy and experience it. You, you're developing just just walking out there." Yes. How was the first meeting for Choco, with Choco? Because we've I've heard yeah. many stories over the over the <laughs> guests that we've had that have been quite intimidating or they've been quite uh, quite weird. How was yours? Uh, so my first meeting with Choco was at draft camp, and he I'd heard he always tried to put people on the spot and just see how you were under pressure. So I was a bit prepped for it, but right really early on, he called me a mama's boy. Um, I just <laughs> oh Jesus! Want to see how I react, and I think I, I think I said something like, "Yeah, that's fair enough." Like, because what had happened was the recruiters, the port recruiters, had come to our house, and I'd just come home from training in school, and Mum was like, "You can't start the interview until Matt's eaten," and which was actually, <laughs> I was still actually am grateful she did that because I'm terrible if I'm hungry. Like that's why I'm a bit late because I had to finish dinner before. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> So that, like, after mom, that, mom let you Choco's know. like, all right. So mum rules the rules the house, and um, so your mum's over there now at the moment, just making sure. Yeah, you- <laughs> yeah she, is. <laughs> <laughs> she is. So he threw a few of those sort of ones out there, but I think I actually handled it all right, and that's why he liked me. Um, but you just hear all those stories from uh, all the other kids, him him doing that to every single person, and just finding something random about him and um, digging in. What What do you remember about your first game at AFL? Um, it was a Anzac Day game. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't play much game time, but when I came on, um, did okay in the rock. Didn't get any of the ball around the ground, really. I think I had three touches or something. Um, but I remember like we got the win, and then afterwards I remember um, on the way home just feeling this feeling of like almost relief or of like excitement that, that was the game of AFL and I played it and it was just a normal game of footy. And I was like, all right, I can do this now. Like I thought it was almost going to be different, um, but it was still just the same game of footy that I'd always played. And that sort of was a breakthrough of going, yeah, right, I can do this now. That was probably my overwhelming memory of it. Was that a grabber in the wet? Was yes. It? it was a good game. 54-4 yeah. win. I also got a, um, got a head knock and had a bandage and there was just an awful photo of me done the next day. <laughs> And it stuck, for some reason, it stuck top of Google Images for about seven or eight years. <laughs> so Googling. That, it's, I think it's gone oh, now, yes. Whitey. I, I don't look up look it up much, but I think it's gone. Um, but everyone used to use that as my photo. It was just a shocker. So well, how, fre- how frequently did you Google your name? <laughs> a bit, obviously. <laughs> oh, that's great. I'll tell you what. Oh, that no, photo, if we find it, that is the thumbnail. That is going to be the thumbnail for this. So <laughs> it'll be find there it, somewhere. Find it. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm going to have to go with head strapping here. There's just <laughs> <It's> <laughs> too many photos of your lobes. Get key words in. Um, oh. Lobes, I will ask that night in general, obviously, Anzac Day game is a pretty special round uh, every year. To debut in that, and against, I think, St. Kilda, obviously, we're grand finalists. We came off of a, a pumping loss to Geelong the week before. Was there much build up? to be in that game in particular, not only as your debut, but just in general? You've got a very good memory, Ant. Um, yeah, it's nuts. Uh, <laughs> very, very good. Uh, yeah, it was. It was the day before um, Choco had taken us down to the wharf and we'd um, gone and seen some of the the wharfies that worked there and built it up and um, we'd heard some stories um, about Anzac Day and, I think he liked throwing young kids in big games as well. That was his thing. So yeah. it was a big build up, and um, yeah, I yeah I remember being very nervous. Um, so as you would be for a normal game, but probably a bit more. So no, it was really exciting. Back to back games were pretty good. You had a showdown the next week. So how'd you handle that? 
Uh, I got. I think I got smacked by Ivan Marek, um, <laughs> and in the ruck. Again, limited game time, but he, I definitely didn't get near the ball. Um, and then was dropped. And then, came, and then took me a few weeks to get back in again. Uh, um, probably one of those good learning experiences. But at the time, you were just like, oh, "All right, that's what it's actually like to play a very good ruckman." Yes, that was the showdown that we saw the spoon in the crowd, Pato. Do you remember oh, that? Was, yes. Yes. Well, yeah, it was just... a tight game the whole way. And then I think Robbie kicked five that day and we just ran away. Yeah. 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 I reckon that was that yeah, I reckon that was the one Rob Rob was in doubt um during the week, hadn't trained. It was really iffy and then just comes out and kicks five. Standard <laughs> dominates. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely standard that. I, I yeah. remember I, I was at that game because I saw the spoons in the bay next to me and it was even funnier because two Crows fans started fighting in front of me. Like they just started fighting each other. It was like, oh, at least you're showing more fight than your team are, boys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> Going through those years, Lobes, 2010, 11, 12, 13, obviously you were finding your craft and we get to, uh, you know, the obviously tougher years for the club. But then you get to 2013, Ken Hinkley comes along. And it sort of just becomes this opening flourish of great games for yourself through those years. How was that development for you coming in, especially with Ken coming in as well? Yeah, at that time, like probably my individual career was getting to a sweet spot when, you know, everything else worked out well for the club. Um, uh, like Kenny and then you had um, Keith Thomas and Koshi and everyone come in at the same time. Um it was just an awesome time because we'd been through some um, pretty shit times um, the couple of years before, and then everything was just a bit a bit more simple. Um, Whitey Whitey jumped on board too. Um, <laughs> I was probably the difference that made you. Yeah, you were. I, yeah. <laughs> I think so. Um, so it was just it was just fun, and like all oh, like at that point, probably best mates with most of the the guys my age. So it was just good fun and. We started to win and um, the crowd started coming out. I'm sure you guys were already at the footy, but there was definitely a lot of fans that weren't at the footy those years prior. Everyone got on board and then, um, yeah, just obviously heaps of fun and probably the best couple of years of my career as well. I always go back to my first year with you, 2014. It was our first year at Adelaide Oval. I, I didn't never had the home game at Westlake's and glad I'd never played there too often when I was with Richmond. <laughs> How much better was it at Adelaide Oval? Because yeah. going, I can say, like, hand on heart, like, Adelaide Oval is one of the best places to play footy. Um, port crowd going nuts. But from going from Westlakes to Adelaide Oval, from your perspective, how, how much better was well, it? Well, the 2013 year was okay at Westlakes because we started building some momentum. Um, but prior to that, it was... Yeah, really not great. Um, the 2014 year, though, that like, so the final game of 2013 when we played at um, Adelaide Oval, that was really special. And then jumping into the 2014 season, um, I don't think there'd been a bigger build up for that first game, that first showdown of 2014 um, than any game I played, I don't reckon, because it was a very, very long build up. And then, uh, yeah, well, we, I reckon we had. Every team that played there the first time, we had them just with the crowd and the momentum. And I, I was thinking that on the weekend when we played Collingwood and they had 60,000 fans and the noise was absolutely crazy. It was mm-hmm. like what? I remember it being like 2014. Um, just You just felt like, yeah, once you kicked a couple of goals, it was over because how loud the crowd were. With that showdown too, Lobes, uh, everyone remembers Whitey going, yeah, yeah, look at me, game's over and I'm dominating. <laughs> But oh, you yeah, kicked, clearly, you, you kicked the first of the game, mate. How, how was that yeah. to be able to get his underway? Yeah, uh, pretty good. You I... kicked the first of the game, but it was from a free kick that wasn't there. <laughs> uh, I, I put a lot of focus. Beforehand. I put a lot of focus into winning the first hit out, and then got that done, and then wandered up the forward line. I reckon Westy nailed a tackle, didn't get the free kick, mm-hmm. and I tackled someone a few seconds later, and I almost got that that um. The benefit of Westy not getting it <laughs> gave it to me, <clears throat> slotted it. Um, so yeah, that was pretty awesome. Um, but I remember that feeling after the game, just being such a relief and and just so awesome after the build up. Actually, 
Fun fact, and this is testing memory, but I'm pretty sure you kicked the last goal at Adelaide Oval before the redevelopment and then the first goal after the redevelopment because you played the game against Melbourne and I'm pretty sure you yeah, kicked the last uh, goal of that game. I don't know if it was last. It was definitely late in the game and it was my first goal. Um, it was your first look, goal. You would right? probably know better than me, and I think. Yeah, How do you <laughs> remember your first goal? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> no, no, I, no. I remembered it. I just can't remember if it was the last of the game. I'm pretty sure it was the last of the game because uh, Daniel Pierce had a shot outside of the fifty, and it landed yeah. in your lap. It was our last for the game. I thought it was a good. It was our last mark, for the game. But, yeah. It was a contested we'll mark. It landed in your lap, mate. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's so, just yeah. Fun fact. Yeah. Uh, fun fact. There you go, yeah. Ant. Fun I'll go with that one. That sounds good. Yeah. Bloody hell. But that year, 2014, obviously you mentioned playing with Whitey, Adelaide Oval, everything going nuts, and that finals run. How good was it aside from the end part? But everything else is pretty good. Yeah, it was It was still like bittersweet because I remember afterwards when we um, lost to Hawthorne and then they dominated the next week going, if we had got through, I reckon we're gonna, we would have won that. And who knows? Who knows? But I remember still being pretty pissed that we didn't get through. Um, but when you look back, you go, yeah, that was a pretty awesome run um, and a very enjoyable year. It was. Bars as well, because we brought him back, obviously, for this week's showdown. But for you, for the prison bar Guernsey, what was that like, wearing that? Yeah, it makes me sort of understand why why the build-up is what it is to get the, the bars back, because it was pretty awesome. Um, we got to wear them, I think, 2013 as well. We got to wear them for a game. Yeah, the um, last one at Amy. Yep, against Carlton. Oh, that, that's right. Yep. Yep. I'll just call you up when my memory's gone <laughs> down a bit. I think. Yeah, um, I'm I'm here for you. So I think I got ah. to wear it twice, um, which is pretty awesome. So, yeah, obviously yeah. you. I think you look good as well. The black and white. You feel <laughs> you feel big and strong. Do you agree with that, Whitey? Us pale blokes. hundred oh, percent. Brings yeah. out the best of it. <laughs> yeah. The jaw didn't feel so big and strong when it, uh, <laughs> when it broke on me. But... <laughs> It um nah made you feel made you feel about ten foot tall. You are ten foot tall, but yeah. um made me feel tall as a midget. Like made me feel a lot better. Good to hear. Now, Lobes, that year the club ran a bit of a uh, promotion with oh, uh, KFC, the old uh, kicking for chicken thing. Yes. Now, <laughs> look at these two rough lids back <laughs> back at the end of twenty fourteen. I've got the same mop as I do now. Nothing's well, changed. What, what happened to whose head? My head. Yeah. It increased significantly. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, so I d- did appreciate, obviously, being that, there that day, Lobes, and um, signing my Guernsey as well. Yeah, now, it's still there. Now, I realised I was a bit of a prick because I brought in the bloody Guernsey of Paddy Ryder to get you to sign as well. It's like, bloody hell, <laughs> just sign another Ruckman and I'll get you to sign this one. <laughs> So, Love apologies, it. mate. Love it. No, we're good. Can, but, can you remember how, like, what I ate that day? Uh, <laughs> oh, fuck. I actually probably Didn't, can. Was one of those. Mum brought Dan, can you remember? Yeah, your mum brought you dinner for you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That sounds right. <laughs> now, I think you had a couple of those rap things, and I remember you called Patrick Dangerfield a dick. So, that was all. That was good as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're happy with my company then? Oh, it was it was it was very good. It was a it was a great day. Oh. Holy moly! Yeah, oh, this oh, I can't remember that part. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I definitely remember yeah. being there. Someone else never said actually about anyone. We've spoken about this before, Hutto, with some of I guess weird fan experiences. Lobes, did you ever have a weird fan experience? I think Hutto's is probably the the one. <laughs> but just in case there's any others, like. We've had people come up to try and sign some random footy merch and stuff like that. Have you had any of that interaction over your career? Uh, no, I can't think of any off the top of my head, to be honest. I'd be absolutely making one up. I, I used to find just the sign, like just sign body parts. I mean, <laughs> the and, and it's not going where you're thinking. It's just like sign my arm, sign my shoulder, like sign my forehead. Like, that was... <laughs> That was a bit odd. Sign my forehead. As far as it got, but that yeah, that was a bit like, am I allowed to do this or not? 
<laughs> Whitey, I generally can't wait for the day that we ask Bokey that about his weird fan experiences because they're all going to oh, be about one bloke. No. <laughs> It'll be, yeah. Uh, so there's this one guy. I've got a friend <laughs> against him now. I wrote a really nice letter, but he just won't leave me alone. He's got 17 different phone numbers. <laughs> once a day. His name's Ant. Yeah. I have a very good memory. None of that's true. Yeah. The you f- other names. <laughs> yeah. Andrew. Alan. <laughs> yeah. Chris. But- a genuine stalker over here, though. Just like proper. What's a crock of shit? Names, Bailey. Like just to try and just say hello. <laughs> And nah, that's bullshit. He went. He went to the Mercedes dealer where he's got his latest. Um, stalked him for a week, waiting for the <laughs> new one to come in. I'll check in with Bokey tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let us know. Do let us know. Well, sure so this was like that was the first time I met Lobes. Lobes, I'd seen again last year. So I, I do the SNFL report. So Lobes, looking at me like oh, he recognised me outside Central Districts. It was like, oh yeah, yes. Lobes, you might have, might yeah, might have seen me. But it was like, no, nah, you look like the bloke who painted my house. <laughs> yes, you know, you seriously do. <laughs> exactly the same. I'm He's pretty sure I said, guy, yeah, yeah. I would have said to you, just like I would have done the shittest job on your house if it was me. <laughs> no, that makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense why I knew your face. Yeah, well, there you go. You spent some good time <laughs> eating chicken together. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> true. Oh, I don't know why oh. I laugh so hard. This I know. <laughs> so much time just eating chicken together. So <laughs> I just... can clearly tell that Lobes' fan experience that was weird was just Hutto. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Just in general, whether he painted his house, ate chicken with him, or recognised him as the sample guy, it's all the same. But Hutto, <laughs> I think we did some. You had some merch there. I think we do random port merch. Oh, we're just going to go straight into it. Okay, back yeah. in the rest of Lobes' career then. <laughs> we'll just go yeah, straight no, around. No, it wasn't, case, much, wasn't much after that year, so that's <laughs> just right. Just want to talk about Carlton or anything like that. Just, nah, screw it. Just the straight Port there. Adelaide podcast. <laughs> well, he's had experience. He could have bought something back. Yeah. <laughs> what what right, was Carlton like, Lobes? You know what? Take, take it. Yeah. What was your time at Carlton like, Lobes? Oh, that's a serious question. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, let's move on. Straight yeah. on to the merch. We're done with this. <laughs> no, nah, it was actually very it was actually very, very enjoyable for only playing eight games and then um not really winning too many either. But yeah, I it's a bit stiff. Made some good friends and a lot of lot of good people there. So I've definitely um even though it's a poor podcast, I've got a soft spot for them now just because of the, the guys there that I still get along well with. Nah, that's good. Yeah. All right, man. You can get your random port merch in now, mate. There you go. I've never been more more disorientated at the moment, but um, <laughs> random random port merch. We're going to do it. This is where we bring out some absolute random stuff that we have lying around. Uh, that's Port Adelaide, or actually, you know what? Since we're going to make this about Carlton now, any Carlton random merch either while we're at it. So <laughs> we'll start with you, Hutto. What have you got? I have the VHS of the 2001 Antset Cup Grand Final. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I just saw white wow. space. <laughs> that's so, uh, <laughs> New release. Um, that's not a new release. That's 22 years old. Yep. So, yeah. Definitely. Does it still uh, work? That I don't know. <laughs> Got to find a <laughs> cross supporter to use it. Yeah, yes. Need to find a VCR. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that that's mine. My VHS of that and um, a Port Adelaide shot glass while we're here. So, that's oh, for us, Whitey, when you rock up. Excellent. Um, we'll go to you, Whitey, but I just want to let you know that I've seen Hutto's boxes of random port merch. There's a lot of boxes. Yeah, this shit's so going to get weird this year. It's going to get absolutely weird. But uh, have you got any, Whitey? Um, as as we discussed, I've got some very self-indulgent stuff, <laughs> but I'll, I'll stick with not being so about me tonight. It's all about lobes. Yes. And hold on. Oh, here we go. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. Every player, I believe, received this. First game, I think it is the first centre bounce. So Lobes is obviously in the middle of the ground. And the tap. Very closely, hold on, I've got to work it out uh, from upside down. You can tell that it's me in the green vest. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks, Kenny. It was a great, great time to uh, sub again. 
that's so good. Uh, I'm pretty sure, a- yeah, Lodes, you've got you've got one too, yeah, Lodes. I do, yeah. I actually had it in this room. Um, it's now in the shed. We had a bit of a discussion about this being the guest room, and then probably not wanting to see all my my old posters. So, oh, that's it's been moved. Yeah, probably a good idea. Mm. I mean, having a guest room and then just lobes everywhere. Matthew, <laughs> Toby, <laughs> you just remember whose guest. house you're in. Yeah. <laughs> More shrine exactly. room to lobes than the guest room. Shrine. Yeah. Uh, lobes, obviously, you said um, that you have majority of your stuff in the shed. Do you have something in particular that you hold dear that might not be as regular as what other players would say? Um, I. I gave to my nana and pa who live in Victoria a, a, a very large um, cutout, cardboard cutout of myself, which was life size, um, which was at a, at a function. Um, they used to have them at functions. And one year, at the end of the year, I, I just happened to be there when they were getting rid of it. And so I took it and um, drove it home that year and gave nana and pa and they kept it behind their door. Um, they've still got it there now. So when people open the front door, there's just a big... <laughs> I will cut out of me. So that's probably the most interesting one I've got at my nana and pa's house. Wait, you said you drove it home. So did you, were you having conversations with yourself as you were driving back yeah, home? No, I, chucked, I chucked, chucked the other version of me in the boot. I couldn't see myself. <laughs> oh, you, you've kidnapped yourself. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I was hoping you didn't get pulled over and they're just checking your boot going, hang on, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah, luckily that did not happen. So, <laughs> Could you imagine, like, I check your ID. Yeah, it's just in the boot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> yeah. That hey, is what have you got? Uh, what have I got? It's the 150th year celebration of footy cards. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's just the footy 2008 footy cards, obviously, with the 150 years of the AFL. And we just go and scroll through some of the port players we've got here. Obviously, Lady, Motts, Piercy, David Roden. Shredders and Hoff are all in there. Hoff without his beard. There's, a, there's nice. another page. Cassisi, Sal. Sal's in here. Yep. Brogues, <clears throat> Paul Stewart, Michael Pedigree, and Bokey. I'm surprised you haven't taken that to him to get signed or like, pushed <laughs> it on something. Just Yeah, tattooed on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> really, at some point. Oh, I'm sucking you both. <laughs> Lopes, Lopes, are you free every week? Because I'm more than happy to have a new co-host. Do you want to be a part of it? We can wow. recollect your memories and stuff <laughs> like that. I've been here. I've been Unfortunately here not. I'm being flicked already. <laughs> Lopes has already gone. Nah. Oh, that's ridiculous. Anyway, let's get into the next segment. This is Big Brother. Big which Brother. Big Brother, which is we talk about Putty trips or some trips away with the boys that might have a special memory. So, Lobes, do you have anything that's quirky or something odd that happened on a footy trip or a trip away somewhere? Mm. Um, I don't know what I can say that's appropriate. Um, <laughs> Throw some boys under the bus. <laughs> uh, if it helps, I may have thrown you under the bus last week. What what do you what do you say oh, about me last week? <laughs> oh, just about our time at uh, I forget which pub it was out the back of Adelaide Oval. <laughs> Where we tried to go beer for beer. Yeah, and I, <laughs> I didn't know, last as long as you. Home. Mm. <laughs> um, no, no. I, I remember my first footy trip. Um, I don't think Chad Corns liked me much until I went on that footy trip and and had a had a crack, and then he thought. I'm actually okay. Um, <laughs> so, not much goss there. Um, Maddie Broadbent was always probably the best best value of the footy trips I went on, definitely. Um, got up to a bit of mischief. No, I don't I don't have much, boy. Sorry. What about Ru- I'm what not, about I'm giving you nothing on this one. <laughs> room, so, yeah, Maddie Broadbent. Um, yeah. I'd roam with him. Yeah. Um, Andrew Moore, room with. I live with both of those guys as well. So, um, nah. Why did, <laughs> did we go on? Do we go on any overseas trips together or not? Nah, just the Dubai trips. That's all we just had. Dubai, yeah. 
Oh, what was they like? Which only had which only had the last night where you could have a good time. The rest of it was not like that at all. <laughs> yeah, I ended up getting in trouble every time anyway. So there was <laughs> hanging around with me. I always got abused by Kenny for being injured and drinking and all the rest of it. So I just had to hide away in the corner while Kenny was looking for me and staring daggers through me every time. Yeah, he did. He did not like it when you were injured, did he? No. Nah. At all. It was always your Wasn't fault. that regularly? For me, yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Thanks and for back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's why the sprint didn't happen. That was. Mm. Oh, I don't think he would have lasted in the sprint anyway, the way you guys are talking about your weekend over here. <laughs> no, no actually, to be fair, Hutto would have probably not even made it either. <laughs> I was able to collapse midway through. Every step he took, there was an earthquake in his head. <laughs> Just to put it into context, Hado and I are having a sprint off at some point. He thinks he's got me. Yeah, all right, okay. <laughs> the, the under twelve state um, state champion, weren't you, Whitey? Is that what your tap tap was for? Uh, yeah. No, that was under fifteen and sixteen as a four hundred. Oh, okay. The flame, the flame. Oh, God, I don't that think you can beat that, Hado. Sprint winner. <laughs> Probably Hado, not. Do you have a tad about your sprinting success? Uh, I will after I beat him. Oh, I'm going to get the forfeit win tattooed on my ankle, actually. <laughs> it's a good answer. Uh, the flame versus the painter. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh, like that. uh, that's very good. Uh, let's get into quick fire questions, Hutto. I think mm. it's time to get to know you, Lobes. And um, it's not football related. It's purely just the weirdest questions we can ask. And they're quick fires, so nothing too fancy. And we'll get straight into it. What's your favourite TV show at the moment? Um, Ted Lasso, new season. Oh, yes. Yep. Great, great choice. Great choice. Yep. Your favourite flavoured potato chip? Um, I'm going to go like a, a kettle sour cream and chive type, type set up. That's a bit fancy. I think we've got that in our pantry at the moment. I really want them. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, body. Uh, what's your go-to karaoke song? Oh, um, Billy Joel, Piano Man. Outstanding. Yeah, that was one of the things I got out of Carlton, um, that song. Ed Kerno playing out on repeat on Mad Mondays. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, hello. I get out of my Mad head. Mondays. Yeah. Uh, your favourite Mario Kart character? Oh, um, Yoshi. Everyone's Yoshi. Everyone's Yoshi. Yeah. I don't know why. Um, all right and this is the most important question on this podcast we can talk about your career all night we can talk about your debut and your build up and all this we just want to know what's your favorite flavor shapes barbecue yes i didn't know whether that was going to get a you're a bit too vanilla answer but um, that's what it's getting from me (laughs) it just is is. you're broken hardo doesn't matter I would say I do like every flavor. Yeah. So you'll never hear me um, knocking another flavor, but they're, they're just my go to. Damn it. Hello's crimpy. That's why he acts like a child every time someone oh, doesn't say crimpy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jesus. You, uh, you, speak of, you speak of vanilla. Like barbecue's got a bit of you know, spice to it. Like it's hot. Yeah. It's crimpy. That, that shit breaks. Like that's shit. I'll, I'll do the insult. I'll do the insulting for you. It's shit, but you're right. I'll still eat it just in case it's there. Um, very good, folks. It was very, very good. Uh, your obscure port players, lads. Mm. Mm. Whitey, how about you go first? Because you had one last week. Oh yes, I finally had one. Um, I'm really proud of this too. Like I, <laughs> I remember last week. It was too late. He never played a game for for the power. Oh no. He played only, I don't even know if he actually played a senior Magpies game oh, for man. Port. Chen Shaolin from oh, China. Oh, my God. Yes, that is obscure. That is outstanding. To sit in the that corner is... towards the uh, massage room, and he was always reading books. Like He wasn't Yoey Wagner style, but he was always reading and trying to learn the language and yeah, the poor fella did his knee really early, didn't he? Yeah, like real early. Yeah, he was around for two years. Yeah, 
think it was two years in the end. And um, yeah, yeah, just unfortunately never got a game. I think he got close. He was an emergency once in the in the Maggie's team, but I don't think he ever played a senior game. That's obscure. Mm. That that's is, that's very. Good. That's outstanding. Very good done. Yeah. Thank Thanks you for that. That's sensational. Hello, what's yours? Uh, Daniel Flynn. No yep. way. Oh, no, you have You've got to be kidding. He, he was the flame before Whitey came. Yeah. He, yeah. yeah, nice. <laughs> Scrapped out Brendan Archie. That's I right. Had, I had Brendan Archie and I scrubbed it out and thought, Daniel Flynn, that's except that's obscure. And you've just... Oh. That's, that's twice good. that's happened on this podcast now. I didn't expect it to was... happen with Daniel Flynn, but there you go. Yeah, Daniel Flynn, I remember um, there was the uh, team talk. Um, Renault team talk in the car. He's driving with the old, oh, yes. old port media manager. I asked him a question. It was like, who's <laughs> who's more paler? You or Lopes? <laughs> <laughs> it was real Again, stitch up. The memory is just astonishing. Yeah, it's a bit, a bit you remember that screwed up. up. Yeah, so Daniel Flynn, so unlucky yet. Uh, Lobes, who's yours? Mine is Jesse Damon Laurie. Jesse Laurie. Damon. Damon was his middle name and everyone called him Damon. Does anyone remember, <laughs> does anyone remember Jesse Laurie? Oh, that name sounds familiar. I think I'm I remember the, here. Oh, so, I remember the name. Rookie in 2008. Wow. So I spent one year with him. He had one year. He's from WA. Um, he was a big bodied mid. Um, had very large legs. Had braces wow. at the time and had like the biggest smile ever. Was just so happy. But he only got one year on the list. There you go. I've got you. Jesse Laurie. Yeah. Wow. That is that's that's good. Yeah. That's, That's outstanding. Uh, this has been our best one yet, and you can target it. You're going to have to go Google it now. To I, I, I've literally got like. him up. You can actually pick him on Pickstarter up here. Yeah. It's different events. <laughs> yeah, well, just to say, mine was Brendan Archie now, so <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Flynn got a run already. Brendan yeah. Archie, the bloke with the longest handball I've ever seen. Mm, definitely. That it swung like one of those things you see at a show where you do the hammer onto the thing. It just in, inspirational handball that he was. Always handball in, in the um, indoor yeah, area. Yeah, in the indoor area. Yeah. It went. And taught me how to handball. <laughs> taught you how to handball. Yeah, because he'd wind it up. He completely. Oh, up. yeah, he'd bring it from over there. Yeah, wind it up. That's right. I think it was the one against North Melbourne that I remember that was just went about 30 meters. It's like. Was it handball? Was <laughs> that the one at Marvel? Yep. Where he was the sub? And our memory is scaring lobes. So we're actually terrified. No, I was just Paul thinking of, if you've seen the video of him at 16 doing a handball. I don't think so. Google that. Brennan Archie, age 16. Do you remember that, Whitey? The handball or the hit? No, the, a handball at 16. Oh, His yeah. Dad recorded of him handballing that was like 40 metres or something. That was ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, that was in his draft video, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that now. That's nuts. He kicked he handles longer than Hutto can kick. That's not true. But anyway. Uh new challenge. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna track Arch down. We're gonna we'll go to Perth if we have to. And then we've got the sprint <laughs> and the handball versus the kick. Well, it depends if you rock up this time, Whitey. Well, if we go to Perth, I will, and <laughs> it's not when like I've had a ninety point loss the day before. <laughs> and you've messaged me during the game. Well, you that could have responded. Fault. No, no, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me just clear this up. <laughs> we're on the we're on the pram, ready to go to the game. And Hutto's like, Whitey. Uh, Whitey. And aunt. message Whitey. I'm like, isn't oh, he yeah, playing? My fault. Yeah, my no, you did not say that, but my fault. I did, yeah, I'll I take said, it. Isn't he, he'd be playing right now and he's like that's right. You'll see it after. You did see it after. You forgot to reply. Yeah. I saw it and then forgot to reply because we we're up. We we're down by ten points at half time. I was in there doing nothing as a coach does at half time, <laughs> and just had a quick little look because not AFL level have to give away my phone. I'm like, oh yeah, I've text him after the game. We're in a chance. We're a chance, and then it all turned to shit. 
<laughs> Is that true, Lobes? You do nothing at half time as a coach? I, I do a lot. Um, <laughs> but there you go. Ah, so that's why I don't have a job back in the AFL. <laughs> No, <laughs> so sledge. Yes. Trick is what if you're not doing anything, just just look like you are doing something. Yeah, that's why I was on my phone. Yeah. I was looking at stats. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forget the old clipboard out. Don't add a <sighs> wrong amount of stats anyway. Jesus. All right. All right. The, la- the last. This is the most segment. important question. Other than Lobes. the shapes. I thought we had that one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Second one. So, so Lobes, we're on an investigation this year. We're trying yes. to find this out. It's probably, unless you have the answer right now, then our investigation's a really short one. We're trying to find out who made the page about you, who made interesting Matthew Lobie, and who ran it. Do you know if, who's run it? If I knew, I would tell you, but I don't. I would love to know. I thought for, it was Kane Mitchell for a very long time. Yeah. And then it's not. <laughs> he would. He, I just. I just think he would have owned up by now. Um, I floated the after idea. This long. I floated the idea. Do you think it could have been Ebo? Like I know he's not no. great at practical jokes. Or anything. <laughs> no, he, he's just not he funny likes... enough to be able to do that. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, I said that. Um, too. I think it. Like, because I messaged the page like really early, and they just <laughs> said it was some. Oh, I don't know. I can't remember what his name was, but he was a uni student at the time. I thought I thought it was a um, one of the boys' housemates because they knew mm-hmm. a lot of the stuff was very close to what was actually happening. Like it would be <laughs> like we're going to the movies now, and we'd sort of just been to the movies or whatever. It was like very close. So I think there had to be some intel there somewhere. Do you guys know who it is? No, that's no, our investigation. No, that, that's what we're trying to find out this year. Before if the you end, could of- somehow yeah through through this podcast this year find out that would be amazing. Yeah, it is definitely mystery. one of the things I want to do um, before my time is up <laughs> is know who that was. So not, not just your time is it's up. on my bucket list. Before, yeah. Just in general. Oh, no. Someone strolls in, loaves on his deathbed, and tells you. <laughs> it's like, yeah, pull the plug, love. That's it. <laughs> just, holy shit. Yeah, There's okay. One of the more ra- random things to happen to me that... that um. You don't think it's going to happen? Yes. The page yeah. just made about you, which, but I, it was very entertaining. Yeah. Or well, made a return was. when you came at the port. Yeah. I, I found it funny because people, um, half the people thought it was me. So <laughs> well, I get compliments that. about being very funny. And I was like, well, <laughs> not really, but thank you. And then some, some people genuinely thought it was me, like actually speaking about what was happening. Like that, they didn't understand it was a piss take, and they were that was the one that I found very entertaining when people thought that. <laughs> I just didn't know how to respond. <laughs> we, we got real deep in the conspiracy last week, and Whitey did float the idea maybe is Loeb's actually running the page. No, nah, again, I, I'm on the same boat as Ebo there, Whitey. I'm not that funny, <laughs> can't, can't do it. <laughs> I know what the hell. <laughs> I don't have time with him. I know, I know he's not that. Sort of funny that he can get on Twitter and talk about himself like that. He's a funny man, but not a funny Twitter person. <laughs> Just long term. Yeah, thanks, mate. <laughs> That's the weirdest <laughs> backhanded compliment I've ever heard. That's what I, that's what I do. I just I find know. that find it very strange that out of the blue, this page is made. Uh, and, you know, it's very popular because I've had Crow supporters, people from other clubs commenting on it saying this is just hilarious. So if it is you and you're having a very, very good cover-up, kudos. <laughs> Thank Fair you. Bump. Kudos. Have they deactivated the account? I'm just, I've just jumped on Twitter now. It's on Facebook. It's on right? Facebook, mate. Oh, that's why. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Oh, there it is. It's just, it's got 21,000 followers. Lobes, do you have that even that many on socials? No, I don't even go on social media anymore. Um, but at the time, I remember the guys were all we'd we'd heard us um, talk from someone about building a profile, and everyone was trying to build their profile. And when that page came out, mine just shot up. <laughs> and I wasn't and I wasn't doing anything, and it was better than everyone else's. So, um, so I was happy with that. Oh, that's sensational! Another people look out now because I reckon that before this drops, we'll see on there that he's been on the podcast. Hmm. Then we know that there's a true leak and that there's something going on and 
there's only the four of us in this little chat now. I, I feel like that's. I feel like there hasn't been a post for a good couple of years. So no, probably not going to happen. January 19, 2022 was the last one. All right. Somebody will be but on it. We'll get, we've got a full board, I reckon, Lobes, and just different pieces of string pointing in different directions of who it could be. Really a lot of them pointing at Kane Mitchell still. Mm. Or so, old housemate. Could it have been Maury? No. Same boat. Not, <laughs> not that funny. Very very straight and narrow. Yeah. Brogsy? No. No, he was pretty funny. Oh. But technology though, like wasn't great on a phone. <laughs> <laughs> We've thrown out a lot of suspects. We we will we will get to the bottom of this. You you should get Kane on here and, and go through the, the grilling process. That might get it out of him. We, lie detector test, Ant. Well, that's what I, we do. Lie detector some, test. Yeah. I've asked him a number of times and it he hasn't said yes, but if he, it's it's an extraordinary long amount of time if it is him to hold strong and not give up on it. <laughs> Keep going. Another and CIS lobes. Another video lobes that made a very good appearance in was Dave Hughes's roast of the club. Oh. Now, what was that like being a part of it? Because by the end of it, you all looked like you wanted to kill him. Got a very strong memory of that. Um, so. I mean that happened, and it, it wasn't very funny. I don't know if you remember that. Really. Like he, it was actually it was really awkward because he he um did the Hawthorne gag early on, and no one mm. laughed. And then he realised that he didn't have the room, and then it was just very like there was a lot of awkward pauses, um, very oh. long ones, and you could tell he was sweating. And then he he said enough good stuff for when they put it all together that it actually looked pretty good. Um. Then we, that night, me and Ebo went to the Fringe and saw him. And it was actually the first date with my now wife. Um, it was a double date. Ebo set us up. And Husey, um, on that at that night, like, apologised to us because he'd seen us before the show in the audience. And I remember my partner, Ash, thinking it was pretty cool that Husey was like referencing us. You know, <laughs> like, Husey really obviously just felt so bad cause, for doing such a terrible job in the morning. So... Um, but- I, he did, there was a redhead gag in there somewhere, and I remember just being like, mate, that wasn't fun. <laughs> just, yeah. Easy pot shot. Funny as line was when he went Westy. That was probably the best one. But I, even my one, like, knowing me about the tattoo and everything else was pretty, like, flat. What was the Westy one? Something about not speaking? Yeah, wow, well, yeah. he can speak. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, yeah I it thought... Was all... um, no, the Kane Corns one, like how Ollie Wines used to wear his boots, like colourful boots. Um, so his, I think his pop could see him. And then he's just t- turned to Kane Corns and gone, can you see him? <laughs> I think that, that was my yeah, That's good. That's not bad. That's, that's not good. bad. But, um, but when I've but seen I, him live, his shows are like flawless. Yeah, so, well, that's the thing. Yeah. So maybe just Port Adelaide, Port Adelaide one, Dave yeah. uses new ones. Mm. Mm. Really, we really um, put him under the pump. I think <laughs> made him absolutely shit himself. Nice work, boys. <laughs> I'd love to know. I'd love to know what he was like at the other clubs. Whether it was the same or they were all smooth. Love we'll, to know. We'll do a bit of investigating on that one as well. I reckon we got a few. Yeah. We got a few running cases, Ant Whitey. God, I'm. I don't know where I'm going to find the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, half time when you're doing <laughs> fuck all. Investigating Dave Hughes now. Fuck. Hey, this is all voluntary as well, so good stuff. Yeah, no worries. Any day. <laughs> Piranha chips, just sponsors. <laughs> Sensational. Oh, uh, Hutto, anything, anything else to add? No, not at all. Lobes, thanks so much for um, joining and making the time, mate. And, um, yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure. Your pleasure to watch. So, um, yeah, really appreciate you coming on, mate. Thank you. Thanks, guys. I think I let you down on the Big Brother segment, but made up for it on the Obscure player oh, segment. So, about, e- about even, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bang on. We're about even, unlike uh, Whitey and Huddo Sprint, which was nil-nil. Actually, no. Sorry? It was a forfeit. Yeah, by Huddo. Congratulations. Huddo. You <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, no, Whitey won. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Yeah. So, well done, Whitey. Congratulations on your sprint. 
Loeb, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And everyone, we'll see you next week.